What's going on everybody? It is Alex from Everything for iPod. Today is June 10th, 2013, which means this morning in California, at around 10 o'clock in the morning, Apple held their annual WWDC, or Worldwide Developers Conference. Every year at WWDC, Apple introduces some new features and products, so today I'm going to be reviewing them with you and showing you what was announced. First off, I just want to talk a little bit about the conference itself. This year, it was very interesting. Apple, instead of going the serious route, played some funny jokes here and there that helped make it a little bit more enjoyable. Along with the best WWDC announcements I've ever seen, there were the most products I've ever seen released and I became very excited. It was definitely the most exciting WWDC to watch. Also, kind of the main topic at WWDC this year was power and battery life. That seemed to be brought up a ton, and I'll go over that in a little bit. First, Apple talked about Mac OS X Mavericks, the new version of the Mac operating system. There are many new features in Mavericks, including a ton of features much needed in Finder. Instead of having multiple Finder windows now, you can have tabs in Finder, as well as tags to documents, which makes for very great searching across your whole computer. There's also better support for multiple displays. If you're running two, three, maybe four displays off of your computer, you will have your menu bar and your dock on all of those screens to make for much easier use. And there's also better full screen support as well as mission control support. There's also new battery and power saving features inside of the operating system, which will make for much longer battery use, especially on the new MacBook Airs announced at WWDC. The new MacBook Airs can get up to 12 hours on battery life, at least the 13 inch model can. There's also an updated calendars app, a new maps app, as well as an iBooks app that integrates well with iOS. Some things I liked were improved notifications where you could actually reply to tweets, emails, comments, right inside of the notification in the top right hand corner of your screen, as well as iCloud Keychain, which will sync all of your saved passwords between all of your devices. Mac OS X Mavericks will be available to developers today and to the public in the fall. After the Mac software was announced, they moved on to new Mac hardware. The new MacBook Airs look pretty much identical to the last generation, but they do house the new Haswell ULT processor. This makes for faster Wi-Fi and faster graphics. The new MacBook Airs with the Haswell processors are shipping today, and they also have more storage space for the money, which is nice. There wasn't much coverage about this, but there also is a new Time Capsule and Airport Extreme available. One of the more interesting products announced at WWDC was a brand new Mac Pro. Apple just called the Mac Pro look a sneak peek. There wasn't a ton of information, but definitely enough to get our mouths watering. Some features about it, it looks really sleek. It's a tall, shiny black cylinder shape. As far as specs go, I'm going to read them off because there are a ton of them. It has an Intel Xenon processor, up to 12 cores. The CPU is two times faster than the previous generation Mac Pro. We have 1,866 megahertz at 60 gigabytes per second RAM, two times faster than the last generation Mac Pro. PCIe flash storage at 1.25 gigabytes per second read speeds and one gigabyte per second write speeds, 2.5 times faster than before. We also have Thunderbolt 2, and this will be the first Mac standard with dual AMD Fire Pro graphics cards, insane graphics, it's going to be great for Final Cut editing, really any editing software you put on it, this will run like a champ. It's extremely small, only an eighth of the size of the previous generation Mac Pro, and it will be coming later this year. One more cool thing they added about the Mac Pro is that it will be assembled inside of the US. There was also one thing added to iCloud. It wasn't huge, but they did announce iWork for iCloud, which means you will be able to edit iWork documents right from your browser on a Windows computer or on your Mac. And the part you've probably all been waiting for is iOS 7, definitely the best announcement at WWDC 2013. There's a completely new logo to go along with a completely new user interface. I'm not going to go over completely everything because I will have an in-depth tour on my channel soon, so if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe and go check it out. There's a completely new user interface and a ton of transparency. The wallpaper responds to your movements and there are just a ton of new features. Everything looks completely different, including notification center, multitasking and folders. And there's also easy gestures to help you get around the operating system better. 
Airdrop was also added to iOS devices, but it will only work on the very new iOS devices. Whereas the rest of the features you will be able to get on the iPhone 4 and later, and the iPad 2 and later, so on and so forth. Siri has a new user interface along with more voices, both male and female, for different countries. Apps automatically update in the App Store now. Might not seem like the biggest addition, but trust me, it will save you a lot of time. There's also a new music player. The whole music player is completely redefined, as well as iTunes Radio was introduced. Kind of like Pandora, where you can listen to songs for free with ads, but if you're an iTunes Match subscriber, you will not have to deal with the ads. You already get it for free. Two features they really didn't talk about, but they said were there, were FaceTime Audio as well as Notification Sync. They also introduced a feature called Activation Lock, where if someone steals your phone and tries to wipe the data and deactivate it, it won't be able to be reactivated, which will help cut down on phone thefts. Something they also announced was iOS in the car. They didn't give us too much information, but what I originally thought it was going to be was an application that you could open on your phone and use it kind of as a car app. If you've ever used Car Home Ultra for Android, I thought it was going to be pretty much the same thing. They didn't announce that. They pretty much said that they're going to be running a custom version of iOS on certain cars. So this isn't something you can buy to put in your car. This is something that will come in your car. In certain car brands, they will have it in models in 2014. The OS looks completely different. They didn't really show too much information and we don't really know anything about it yet. There were definitely a ton of huge updates to iOS as well as Mac OS X and some new products introduced as well. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Also check out earlyios.com. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to try iOS 7 out today. I'm going to be uploading a tour video on iOS 7 to show you all the features in depth really soon. I'm going to start working on that right now. So in the meantime, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. Were you surprised, happy, upset about the announcements? Let me know. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't forget to watch my video about iOS 7. And also, I will be giving away iOS 7 beta to some of you guys. So make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in my next video.